Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to teach you the zoo geography. Distribution of an animal can be studied under the subheading of geographic range, geologic range and ecological range. So the geog geographic range means it is the specific extent of land or water in which the animal resides. Geologic range means studying the distribution of animals in time that is past and present. An ecological range means major biotic communities of which the organism is a member. So what is biota? All the living organisms of a given region is considered to be biota. Biota consists of flora and fauna. So together they constitute biota. So the flora are the plants of a given region and fauna are animals of a given region. So together they constitute biota. Now the biogeography is the study of the distribution of the biota. So that includes both zoogeography and phytogeography. Geographic range or distribution of animals in space can be of two types. The one is the bathymetric or vertical distribution parallel to the y-axis of the earth and another is the geographical or horizontal distribution that is the parallel to the y-x-axis. Bathymetric or vertical distribution can be of three types. The first one is limnobiotic distribution that is distribution in fresh water, then holobiotic distribution that is distribution in sea and the last is geobiotic distribution that means distribution of animals on land. The next is the geologic range that is the distribution of animals in the past of earth's history is called the geological range. So you will have to take the help of fossil evidences in order to study the geological range of an animal. The patterns of distribution of an animal can be of four types. The first one is called the arctic distribution. In this case, a number of species are found to inhabit only in the arctic or antarctic waters with no representatives in the intermediate oceans. So this kind of distribution is called bipolar distribution and this characteristic is called bipolarity. Now the tropical distribution, the distribution of an animal on land mass between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn are called tropical distribution. So this region is having the maximum biodiversity. Then there are continuous or discontinuous distribution pattern. So the continuous is one in which the animal is evenly distributed and is found over a wide area that is uninterrupted range of surface distribution. So this kind of distribution is called continuous or cosmopolitan distribution and discontinuous distribution when different species of same group or different members of a species are living in different parts of the earth then this is called discontinuous distribution. So this kind of distribution is a kind of clumped on the earth. Now let us come to the definition of geographical rim. So the major units of distribution of animals which are defined largely by the past and present relations of the continents to each other. So that each region is further subdivided into faunal or ecological units depending on the criteria used. So Sclater is the first scientist to recognize this geographical rim in 1858 after 10 years Huxley modified the concept of Sclater and then Alfred Russell Wallace in 1876 he extended the idea of Sclater and he is called the father of zoo geography and Darlington is he has best described the, the zoo geographic calories in modern way. So on the basis of presence and absence of several organisms the art can be divided into some regions. So these regions are called rims. Alfred Russell Wallace in 1876 he published a paper he retained the six area concept of concept proposed by Sclater. So the only change that he made is he renamed the Indian region of Sclater into Oriental region. According to the concept of Sclater and Wallace, there are six major zoo geographical rims. The one is Nearctic, as from the map you can see, it constitutes the whole of North America. And the major, uh, the next zoo geographical rim is the Neotropical, that is the South America. And then you have the Palearctic zoo geographical rim, that is most of the Europe. And then you have Ethiopian zoo geographical rim, that is the African region. You have Oriental zoo geographical rim that is most of the Indian subcontinent and the Australian zoo geographical rim. So now what is Wallace's line? The Wallace's line is a faunal boundary line drawn in 1859 
by the British naturalist Alfred Russell and named by English biologist Thomas Henry Huxley. So this line basically separates the biogeographical bio rims of the Asia and Wallacea. So this part is the Asia and here is the Wallacea. So the west of the line that means here are found organisms related to the Asiatic species. To the east a mixture of Asian and Australian region. So this line runs through the Indonesia between Borneo and Sulawesi and through the Lombok and Strait between Bali and Lombok. Distribution of many bird species observe the Wallace line as do the larger terrestrial mammals because they are generally limited to one side or the other. In general, the floral species do not follow Wallace line, the exception being eucalyptus. Thank you all for watching my video. Hope you now understand the concept of geographical rims.